Welcome back to Poem With Purpose. This is Dr. Diana here, and I am here to talk about our next podcast episode edition. This week's episode is the Pumping Survival Guide High Lipase Edition. I know this will be a popular podcast episode because this podcast will talk about all things high lipase. I need you to understand. I don't need you to stress. I don't need you to worry. It is what it is. I'm going to give you tips on how to prevent it from happening if possible. And I'm going to give you tips on if it does happen, how to manage it. I get this question so often about high lipase. So let's jump right in. This is Dr. Diana here. I am the CEO and founder of Pump With Purpose. We are a global lactation and postpartum private practice helping women all across the world to breast pump. I'm a doctor of public administration, a certified lactation counselor, a certified breastfeeding specialist, and as of this week, now a certified postpartum doula. So let's jump in. We have seen well over 2,500 clients in the last two years worldwide. We help you to increase your milk supply with the right pump, flange, products, and schedule. If you want to learn more about us, you can find us everywhere and anywhere on all social media platforms. We have 15, but Instagram is our largest platform sitting today at well over 75,000 followers. Also, you can find us on our website, www.pumpwithpurpose.com. Purpose.com. So I've gotten a lot of accolades and people telling me they love the podcast because we jump right in. We jump right in. We give you the secret sauce of the secret sauce and we jump out. We don't do all the pre-recorded announcements and all the things before you get right in. It takes like five minutes just before you even get the information. Now, we don't do that over here. We don't have the time, nor would we want to listen to that. Um, you know, we do have to, but we knew that when we built our podcast, we were just going to jump right in. If you are continuing to listen to us, you will know where to find us. If you want to know about our current offers, you can definitely visit our website. You can send us a DM on Instagram or, you know, or send us a contact us form on our website. We will be happy to answer you whenever and wherever, but we don't need to do all this in the podcast. I'm just, it's not, it's not me. <laughs> so let's jump right into high light pace. So light pace is an enzyme that helps your baby break down breast milk to be able to digest and absorb the essential nutrients that the breast milk contains. Lipase is naturally found in breast milk, all breast milk. There's nothing we can do about it. Listen, that's what I'm telling you. Stop stressing about the stuff. Something you can't do anything about is out of your control. Guess what? Guess what? Guess what? We have to learn how to deal with it because it's out of our control anyway. But anyway, <laughs> um, it's naturally found in our breast milk and it's but um and it's believed that too much of this enzyme can change the flavor, taste, and or smell of the milk. When pumped breast milk is stored in cool temperatures, it's suspected that high levels of high lay paste cause the fats in your breast milk to break down quicker, impacting the smell and flavor of it. So let's let's talk about it. So it's in our breast milk anyway. So let's stop stressing because we may find out we have high light pace. This is the podcast episode that's going to give you all the tips and tricks, all the things that, you know, we help our clients or our followers and all the things you will find it in this podcast episode. So you want to some of the things we also have a blog post that we um, go from as well, but we're going to also give you some tips and tricks that's probably not in the blog post as well if you find that first. So you want to track the timing of how long it takes for your breast milk to change. You will be able to take, you can, if you want to, you know, I'm tell you, we have never tasted our breast milk, but <laughs> we've smelled it, but you can do like taste or smell tests. And once you figure out the timing, doing this will allow you to know how long you have between pumping and feeding or letting it sit before you actually decide to freeze it. Some mothers have found that lowering the speed and pressure of their breast milk pump improve the smell and taste of it so flash freezing which is one option freezing immediately after pumping it helps to reduce high light pace sitting it in the fridge can also cause the high light pace at times so what we're saying here is this ways to prevent high light pace if you have a lot of high light pace what we call flash freezing where if you freeze immediately so when we were pumping we would literally if we had an oversupply. There's no secret here. If you follow up on what purpose, you know we're team oversupply, team freezer stash. So within two sessions, we had enough milk to freeze five ounces. So what we would do is just leave it on the counter because milk is good 
per CDC as of right now, today's date, <laughs> for four hours uh, room temperature. So we knew we were going to pump again before then. And by the end of that pump, we would have enough extra to feed our baby, what the baby needed, and then extra for the freezer. So we would avoid letting it sit in the fridge. <clears throat> If you do need it to sit in the fridge, we don't recommend per CDC letting it sit for four days in the fridge. No, no, and more no. What we want you to do is within 24 hours or the night of, if that's more convenient, is to get it in that freezer as soon as possible. We love flash freezing when we were home for maternity leave. If you're maternity leave and you have a freezer stash, definitely try to flash freeze as much as possible. When we went back to work, anything extra, we froze the night before. Very rarely did our milk um, sit out or sit in the fridge um, too long. We didn't let it sit out. We knew that the baby's gonna take it within three hours. Cool if it was going to go in the fridge. Definitely no more than 24 hours before freezing. So definitely that's a big, huge way to prevent high light pace. You, we don't support, I'm gonna put up here again, I'll repeat it again, the scalding method as it can impact the nutrients like that. That ship is sailed. That information has changed yet again um, that the scalding method can't impact nutrients. So it's overall no longer recommended. And so the best way to handle it is try to prevent it from happening, getting it in the freezer um, as soon as possible is most important if you want to try to prevent it. If you do end up having it and find out that your milk has a soapy metallically taste and or smell, there are ways to correct the highlight paste per se. If your child will accept it, there's nothing to do. I'm going to say it again and again and again and again for the record here. If your child will accept the frozen breast milk with the high light paste in it there's nothing to do it just may not taste the greatest their breath may not smell the best um, but they're taking it let them take it let's not add another thing to our list to overreact on like we need to understand that certain things are out of our control we want to give our children breast milk let's give our children breast milk it doesn't mean that it's no longer good it just means that the light paste enzyme has corrected in it high enough that it impacts the taste and or smell so if you found out that your highlight paste breast milk has um it's there that you have it a couple things first and foremost if you find out you have it i want you to relax first okay i want you to relax it's going to be okay mixing the milk with freshly pumped breast milk will help to sweeten or taste more like your fresh breast milk so what we tell people for example give you an example even numbers we don't have to stress about all the calculations let's say your child takes four ounces of breast milk you i believe in freezing in four ounce increments i'll give you some extra tips here i believe in freezing in what your baby takes in a bottle so you're not having to stress yourself about when you pull out the milk you have to add more to it or you have to um save extra from it like if your baby takes four ounces and you freeze in six ounce increments every time you thought out you got two ounces of breast milk you got to figure out versus like just freezing in your increments that's what we support here we also believe in trying to start to unthaw your breast milk no later than three months postpartum or 12 weeks postpartum we don't want you waiting four and five and six months we prefer sooner rather than later so if you start to have a freezer stash start rotating that freezer stash and if you want to a month into it whenever you get on your get on your feet again <laughs> not literally on your feet again but when you can like like live some life and think about some extra things to do on the list then yeah you could throw in rotating your frozen breast milk which looks like pull out the fresh milk um the fresh milk and um I'm sorry, you pull out the frozen milk and then replace it with fresh so your freezer stash never goes down, but you start to just rotate it. We love to do a bag a day. Some people do a bag for the uh, the day's worth of milk, which is like a frozen Fridays. We don't like that over here at Pomo Purpose because it's stressful. Um, what about the child doesn't drink all that you just took out? If you just do a bag a day, you'll still end up with seven bags used in the same week time frame anyway. Um, and so, you know, this is just assuming your child takes drinks about seven to eight bottles. You'll still end up with the same rotation. You just lessen the risk of your child not drinking it you lessen the risk of having to stress like if they don't then you have 24 hours from the last ice crystal figuring that out is a lot as well um it's just it's just not worth it we just like we would take our milk out the day before so let's say if our child was getting frozen breast milk at their dinner time at six o'clock pump i mean whatever six o'clock pump and feed session 
then we would take our milk out the night before because it would take almost 24 hours for our milk to thaw so you also want to know how long it takes your milk to thaw so you take it out right beforehand as well um put it in the fridge let it thaw naturally that also helps to not just f uh, flash thaw it which means like dump it into a big thing of hot water um or anything like that we like to s freeze flash freeze but let the freezing mechanism happen and also thaw think about it like this we don't take food out the freezer and just dump it in hot water so it's ready soon enough like you don't want to do that um and so we want you to do the same thing if it's up to us and what we recommend please always do what's best for you your baby's crying listen you gotta do what you gotta do but we'd like to prepare and just know that we take our milk out the day before we're about to use it so if you do find out you have it Highlight paste, not it. Highlight paste. Um, if you find out you want to mix it with fresh, so for example, I got distracted again on more secret sauce tips because you know that's what happens in our podcast. But if you do find out you have highlight paste, so let's say your baby takes four ounces, so you would take four. You make essentially two bottles, so you would take two the two ounces each that was in your four ounce bag and put it in two bottles and then you would take two ounces of fresh breast milk and put it into each bottle so total you'd have in each two of the two bottles two ounces of fresh two ounces of frozen other bottle two ounces of fresh two ounces of frozen and that'll just help to die down on the soapy metallically taste and or smell and hopefully your child will take it um you know even at worst case like you do take out a four ounce bag you can make four ounce four bottles worth of it if you re i mean usually if you water it i mean not water if you milk it down that much with fresh milk it should be fine one ounce of um frozen like you know and then three ounces of fresh breast milk i doubt your child's gonna taste that if you really want to but usually a mixture of half and half two bottles and you can easily use it you don't have to stress about making all these extra bottles and stuff so up to you to do what's best for you we're just here to give you more tips for the free so that's one way then the another another way is to add a couple of drops of non-alcoholic vanilla extract please check with your pediatrician or allergist first if your child has any allergies or anything like that you definitely want to check just to make sure that they're okay with it um, but a couple drops of non-alcoholic vanilla extract can help to mask the taste <laughs> um, and hopefully the smell as well of the highlight paste milk and then finally a newer option as of today um, that we've learned a lot about as well is flash freezing um, I'm sorry freeze drying I'm sorry <laughs> freeze drying your breast milk I want to say it again another option the third option is freeze drying your breast milk which which kills up to 90% of the highlight paste enzyme and an extra bonus once it's flash frozen um through I'm sorry once it's freeze dried I don't know why I keep I, I'm talking about this different term but the the f's words are just um the freeze and the flashing but say it again freeze drying your breast milk it kills up to 90% of the highlight paste enzyme as well as extends the shelf life of your breast milk to up to three years so it basically takes your breast milk and turns it into a powder and then you can use the powder to extend the shelf life like it's good for up to three years it's a new thing that's out here please get it done professionally if you're going to decide to do it you know you have to make sure it's treat cleaned well it has to you know you don't want to do that on the side um you know there there are all kinds of things that are out here but we just really want you to be as safe as possible with your child and your breast milk so we believe in using a company um that you know that works best for you with your research but we definitely um have seen people freeze dry in their breast milk to help take out the high light paste enzyme as well as extend the life of the breast milk um for up to three years with freeze drying so just another thing for you to consider so again i want to repeat that we do not we do not do not do not do not do not support the scolding method um you know it's it's just really it really can impact the nutrients and it's just not worth it um and plus the time that it takes i don't even know i've never done it i've seen videos of like people sharing it um it's just a lot of work to me it just looks like a lot of work when you can easily follow these tips freeze dry it um flash freeze it sooner or you can um follow the other things if you do find out you have it mixing with mixing it with fresh you can also make sure to add a couple drops of non-alcoholic vanilla extract 
check with your pediatrician or allergist first or consider freeze drying your breast milk. So there's just so many, there are just so many other things that you can do with it. And so we really like for you to understand highlight paste. Understand it's not the worst thing in the world. It's not something to stress about. It's just something to try to work around if you find out you have it. Like I said, it can really help to rotate your breast milk to find out if you have it. People are like, oh, I got all this frozen breast milk, you know, and by the time they start to thaw it, then they realize and then they have all this milk that possibly their child will not take. So if you find out you have it sooner, you can start to figure out if you can help prevent it. Like, flash freezing that usually can really really help prevent it um, but if you still find out hopefully it won't be as bad as it's sitting in the fridge for four days and then you decide to freeze it um, the chances of highlight paste are much higher when you just let it weed and sit for a long period of time we really like 24 hours over four really really cannot ex express and stress that enough so we hope you found this podcast helpful we usually like to stick um to just getting right to the the business at hand and telling you our thoughts but we really want you to understand we don't want you to stress we have to put that message in here because people think that their stash is ruined they're like giving it away and if you want to give it away and donate it perfect that's not a problem but there's so many other tips if you do want to save some of it for your baby and even if at the moment your baby won't take it um let me tell you something what happens after they turn six months and they get a more open palate to food and <laughs> I'm sorry you know um, some of the food and the baby food or if you're you know um, giving even if you're doing baby led weaning like just the, the veggies and stuff like that they don't they don't love that either <laughs> and um, you know so I'm not telling you to give your child anything that like they don't want or they're you know not handling it well but I'm saying nothing happens better like the test of time um, sometimes what wouldn't be accepted at Two months can be accepted more um, easily at six months and seven months when they've in, been introduced to solids. So just stuff to consider. Don't like go doom and gloom the moment you find out you have highlight paste. So we hope, hope, hope you found this podcast episode very helpful. We we are so excited to do it because we really need you to understand more about highlight paste. And so we hope you found this helpful. Please be sure to give us a follow on Instagram. Let us know you listen to our podcast episode. Let us know what you think of it. We've gotten we're getting so many clients um that's saying that they've been listening to this podcast episode. You can find us on I don't know which one you're on when you're listening to this, but we are now on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts and Amazon Music. So we're just so excited to be able to be in all places um, and really give um, our information, get our information out that we believe about breast pumping. So we hope you found this helpful. Until next time with Pump With Purpose.